look what we have. There's our new autopilot drive. This is a BNG T0, which is the right size for our boat. Um, I would have gone bigger, but our tiller arm size is correct for this drive. This goes to about 20,000 pounds of boat weight though, so we're only 13.5. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be a direct swap with the old one, but this is the closest replacement drive to what we have, which is a Simrad HDL350. Um, they have the same size stroke, same size tiller arm requirements, so I figured I'd try to get a direct replacement to make my life as easy as possible. Let's back up here and chat about why we're replacing our autopilot drive. This will be Calico's third drive unit in the past 7 years and 35,000 plus miles. The autopilot drive is one of the hardest working components on the entire boat, steering 24-7 for days on end while on passage. Our current drive experienced issues during our latest passages south, transiting the boisterous Sea of Cortez. The wind funnels so much. While we got it working again, it seemed like a prudent idea to install a new drive in preparation for our upcoming Pacific Crossing. I mean, the first step is going to be to swap out the old drive and then kind of see how everything lines up. I may need to make like an adapter plate out of this G10 I have. Um, I don't want it to be too thick because there is tolerance for how, what angle the drive could be sitting at, so I would want to raise it up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go check it out now inside the sail locker and maybe get the old one un uninstalled. Replacing our autopilot is one of a few projects we're working to knock off on our Pacific prep to-do list while here in pretty Barra Navidad, Mexico. It's a good place to be parked for a while, this charming little town with its chill vibes, tropical scenery, and a surf break to boot. Solenoid. Snip it there. Okay. This is the drive. Can we stop? Okay. You see the two drives here side by side? They're very similar sized. Um, it looks as if the back holes match up with the back holes, but this plate's a little bit longer. So I'm gonna have to build some sort of adapter plate uh, to make that work. So I'm kind of just dry fitting the new pilot. I have one bolt in the mounting bracket. Um, trying to determine uh, if it's hitting the stops when I go full over on the rudder. Um, looks pretty good. I'm also trying to determine whether, because I have to modify this bracket too narrow compared to the base of this new one. Um, so it's going to go a little higher if I go on top, so I'm wondering if I should go underneath or go on the top. So kind of playing around with the geometry of the new drive. Um, I'm not going to do anything today, it's kind of just like a dry fit. spear fishing right now. We were here uh, last summer and Bill went on a dive mission with our friend Gary from One Life and Cole and found a really good spot with a lot of fish. Now that was in the summer so conditions are a little different now. We're hoping for the best um, because we love to dive. It's like our big cruising thing. Keep all my weights in there. But I'm really excited to get back in the water because it's been it's been since Isla Isabel, I guess, right?
just threw the anchor over. We are not very sure this is gonna be as cool as we hoped because it's quite turned up and aggressive out here. Um, but we're gonna swim in and just check out the little rocks kind of behind us and around us and see if we can see anything. Cause when it's um, a lot of waves like this too, the clarity generally goes down, but Sometimes it means the fish don't come to see it coming though either. Or yeah, you Bill just said sometimes it means the fish don't see you coming. So. Which is good for me. Yeah. Not good for the fish. <laughs> when the water's churned up from wave action, it's much harder to see. Ideally, the stiller the water, the better for diving. Not only is the clarity reduced, but divers must be careful not to get too close to the rocks because the current and pull of the waves can suck a person in and colliding with urchin-filled rocks is not fun. But fish tend to hang out by the rocks, so it's a bit of a catch-22. How's it looking, Skip? Pretty turned up. Oh, not worth staying, or should we find somewhere new or stay here? I don't think so. All right. Uh, Okie okay, dokie. Chain. Nice job, Allie. Thank you, it was very hard work. <laughs> Okay, so we just came inside a little lagoon type thing around the corner because the other spot Bill tested out and it did not did not look good. So it's a little bit less churned up in here. Turn up what? <laughs> We're gonna we'll see what we can see. One, two, three. Saw a puffer fish hiding in a rock, but visibility is not not that good. It's nice to get a swim in though. Little one. clearest water, I actually really enjoy certain aspects of diving in strong waves. The fish are overpowered by the current, and I often get closer to them for longer than I normally would, and end up with cool footage. It's also kind of fun to get sucked up and swept away with them, all of us powerless against the water's force. I'm happy to announce that this week's video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is a virtual private network which enables you to become safer online in one single click. With an online business, we can't afford to fall victim to cyber threats, such as phishing, man in the middle attacks, and that sort of thing. But the real reason I like using a VPN is for entertainment. Um, we use VPNs in order to gain access to American shows that we wouldn't have access to here in Mexico. Um, they know your location, so if you put on a VPN, it actually enables your IP address to appear as if it's in America, and then we get access to our favorite shows. Uh, Grace and I, being from New York, right now we're watching The Sopranos. It's a 25th anniversary, and uh, we have access to it through HBO Max, but that would not be available here in Mexico. For when you travel, NordVPN is a great companion, uh, not only to protect you from unsecured Wi-Fi networks, it also allows you to keep up on your favorite content from home. Use the link in the description below to get a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's risk-free. Capiche? We decided to go into the marina. Just to change the scene a little bit. Uh, it's supposed to be cloudy and humid. So, we've also been sitting in this lagoon for like three weeks now. 
I love to get the boat hose down. The bird's been attacking the crap out of us. Mm -hmm. So a little change of scene, pool, gym, and all that stuff, which is nice because we haven't been doing a lot of moving and a lot of computer work. So time for a change. tricky thing is getting out of the lagoon you really have to stay in the channel because it's very shallow all the way around so be very, very careful i don't want to run aground in here it's happened quite a few times it's a notorious place it's very shifting mud bottom or sand bottom so I'm looking to forward scan. I got close coming in, so I was trying to go around a panga or a canoe. from my angle on the bow whether we really had clearance. I don't dock ever, so yeah. When it's obvious, I can tell, but I couldn't tell. But there was someone on the dock that could see we had enough space, so uh, Bill made the turn perfectly. Uh, and the only thing is <laughs> Bill's looking at right now is, you know, we gave the marina our length as 36 feet, but we're really, Quite a bit longer with uh, this thing on the back and our dinghy, and so <laughs> I think we're gonna have to pull the dinghy um, alongside the uh, the front. But I think the only reason we got in here is because we are the size we are because they have a fishing tournament starting. Uh, so I'm really glad we came in today. Um, so yeah, and um, breaking waves is right. That's Kiana, right? Yeah, funny enough, I didn't know we were supposed to. It's right there. So that's fun. So I'm working on uh, installing the autopilot again. I actually wound up removing the whole bracket. It's that piece of, I think it's aluminum. I thought it was stainless thing. It's actually aluminum, it's light. There, it usually goes across here. Um, I'm doing that because it's just easier to see and easier to see the, the holes I need to make uh, and get everything lined up. I'm hoping it's enough to drill through. Um, and what else? Uh, I guess while I have access to the steering cables now, I probably should tighten them because we replaced them back in a boat yard, but now we've sailed about a thousand miles. I think they've loosened a little bit. So you can see that the old hole pattern for the old drive doesn't match up to the new one, which is a square. So I'm gonna take this piece of G10, it's a quarter inch, and I'm gonna make a modified mount with it. Um, a little bit of lift doesn't matter so much. Uh, the drive could be 15 degrees up or down. So I think it's gonna go something like this. I'll probably remove this edge of the G10 and a little bit here. So I got this lined up how I want it. Uh, I'm gonna put a little mark in it, G10, so I know. Okay. So I hit the metal, so now I know where I'm drilling. Slow and steady metal. I'm 
you feel it peeling off like that and shards, that's a good sign. It's like the longer bands. progress yesterday but today what do you have to do today electrical oh yeah but i seem like the solenoid is not wired properly or something i don't have the wires for the solenoid sometimes <laughs> okay so i figured out how to get inside the solenoid <laughs> that was causing me problems um basically there was this little gasket that was covering the markings where you pull open to get to the set screws um, I went ahead and established the polarity coming out of the computer for the solenoid. I extended the wire, and now I'm going to begin uh, wiring the solenoid. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It, where is it? So it's this little thing takes the wires, little set screws, and then you kind of assemble all this back together. And that's basically what allows the drive to engage and disengage. So when you're hand steering, the drive's off. When you're um, using autopilot, it engages the solenoid, and then everything works. Well, I only had thin black wire, so I'm gonna test the polarity one more time so I don't get confused. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is attach the voltmeter to the wires and then engage the autopilot. It's not gonna work, obviously, but I'll see voltage coming from the computer that I can measure, and then I'll know which one goes. Um, according to what I read, uh, pin one should be positive and the pin two should be negative. I marked that. So that's reverse, so this one is negative. This one's positive. So let's go back on. Okay, so next step is determining the drive voltage. Um, I don't think it actually matters that much because the motor is reversible. The manual just says like positive, negative goes in the RAM goes, so the other one goes out. So it shouldn't matter, but I'm just gonna double check if I can see any polarity. It's all wired now. Now I think I have to reconfigure it all though. So let's see. What well, failed? Why? Don't know what that's all about. These <laughs> are troubleshooting. After much trial and tribulation, it back. Much quieter. <laughs> My dumbass had reversed the uh, solenoid or the coil engage and the drive. So I'm getting like really crazy voltages, like ramping up like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 volts as the drive was trying to test itself. For some reason, it was thicker wires on the drive, and I didn't go to the computer because I didn't feel like taking out all this stuff. But that'll teach me to try to take shortcuts, because I just had waited an hour, text port, an hour on the phone, getting ready to explore all sorts of things, and it was just a simple wiring issue. Luckily, didn't fry anything. I was seeing AP clutch overload, which would mean, because the drive was trying to build up too much power, but uh, the computer protected itself, so all good. Well, that dive was amazing, uh, and I just went through our GoPro footage and realized that the last like three or four clips I filmed I had in hyperlapse so I must have hit a button and kind of sad because there was a really cool shot that I got of a bunch of puffer fish on a rock and is gone um, and so I didn't so my little recap is gone but yeah it was an awesome dive and really surprised that I actually got some good shots considering how churned up it was but I think the current would just kind of suspend motion and the fish would be like stuck and the water was really clear in those moments so it was fun to film and dive and swim and feel great after doing that, but we are showered, dressed, and ready to go into town to grab some drinks. And I think we're gonna meet Ben and Allie. Um, yeah, and just watch the sunset. Barra is a really cute town. It's not too touristy, but it it is also touristy. So there's like very much the gringo touches, which, which we love. <laughs> okay. 
But, oh, gotta bring back Allie's bowl. We had Ben and Allie over the other night um, to have lasagna. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, they left their, their bowl. So anyway, here we go. Into town. Here we go. Friday night. <laughs>